Today I'm excited because I am sharing my top 22 tools for 2022. Hello and welcome. If you are new, my name is Jennifer and this is a little bit of Common Crazy where I love sharing easy DIYs and budget decor, which means I use a lot of tools and today I can't wait to share with you my favorite tools that I have been using this past year. Now some of these tools have definitely already had a lot of hype even from other creators and I'm gonna give you my reasons why I think they deserve all the hype they are getting and some of these other tools you may have never even seen even from me but they deserve a lot more love than I'm even giving them because they are like the I don't wanna call them underdogs. They're like behind the scenes, the things that get so many jobs done that I couldn't live without them and you deserve to know what they are. One of the things I feel like every crafter should have in their stash would be wood clamps, specifically a small set of wood clamps. I love this size. This is a set that I picked up on Amazon. It came in a set of four, which I think is perfect because Quite honestly, anytime I just have two, I always think I need a third one. So I think four is like the ideal number to have. And then just the length on this works for so many of the projects that I have because I tend to do smaller projects more often than like really big ones. Actually got these on Amazon for just around $20. Anything that I can leave a link for, I will leave in the description box. If you do click on that link, I do receive a small commission and I wanna thank you for supporting me and my channel. But if you wanna search these up on your own, that is completely fine as well. So these are definitely something I think everyone should have in their stash. This next tool does double duty, it's a two in one. So here you have a metal razor on one side and a plastic scraper on the other. It actually comes in a pack of two, which I actually think is perfect because I like to keep one in like my craft stash and another one near the kitchen. I'm sure you realize how great it would be just to have the metal razor, but I can't tell you how often this plastic razor will be used. It is so great for scraping up like stickers on the back of signs or glass when you, we're talking about crafting, or I used it actually to help me remove some old caulking. This comes in handy even in the kitchen. You can scrape like the gunk off your counter without damaging it. And as you can see here, it's not gonna hurt you, but it's nice and thin so it can really scrape. So it is such a fantastic tool. And if you have a rougher job or a harder job, then that's where that metal part will come in handy. The fact that you get two of them for under $10, I think is such a good deal. If you have been around for a while, you have seen me use my spray tent. It is one of my most used, well-loved products that I have. I cannot say enough good things about it because it protects your area, but not only is it really easy to pop up, you can just as easy collapse it and put it away and it hardly takes up any space at all. No matter where you live, if you live in a house, an apartment, on a boat, in a tent, on an island, it is just a really great thing to have to protect your area if you spray paint. Along with that, I always get asked questions about my Lazy Susan. Now my Lazy Susan, I actually just purchased the hardware and screwed it between two pieces of wood. What I like particularly about this is that it can hold up to like a thousand pounds and I can actually just take it out and replace the wood if the wood gets a little bit yucky over time from all the painting that I do. And the Lazy Susan will just still last a really long time. I will never need to replace that. So it's a one-time investment. If you've been crafting for a while, I know you already have probably at least a half a dozen pair of scissors, but I love these Singer scissors. You can purchase just one of them, but when you purchase four of them, the price drops on them. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm one of those people that likes to have a pair of scissors just like within hand's reach of me, so I liked having multiple scissors. I use one pair of these to cut like paper, and the other one I use to cut like ribbon and twine and things like that, and so the one for that, I just use some washi tape on it so that it's marked and I always know which is for what. I just love these so much because they are super sharp and then they come to this nice sharp little point and I cannot say enough good things about them. They are just great little scissors to have on hand. I feel like I have been holding out and I should have shared this tool with you so much earlier and that is my zip snip. Oh, it is so good. So you have a rotary blade here, but it has a nice flat surface so you can just run this along your table or the floor wherever you are cutting and you can cut such a great straight line with it and it cuts through things like butter 
Here we're cutting some of the foam padding that goes underneath a rug and it's just slicing right through it. So I just did it at first just to show my husband because he had never used it before and I just wanted to show him how easily it worked. Then he did it. Honestly, it takes no lesson. It is so easy and I, again, you guys, these are so good. I even use them to cut the wrapping paper at Christmas time just because I didn't want to have a sore hand from opening and closing scissors. Yep, these things are fantastic. I feel like as crafters, we all know the importance of good brushes and these without a doubt are some of my favorite brushes. Believe it or not, I have had these brushes for over two years and I feel like they are holding up so well for the abuse that I put them through. Now, a couple of these I actually use for Mod Podge and the other four I use for paint. Now, the ones I use for Mod Podge are definitely a little bit more stiff in their movement and the ones I use for paint definitely have more flexibility. So that is something that will happen to the brush over time, but the Mod Podge still goes on just fine when I use the brush and I find that the Mod Podge goes on nice and thin with using the brush and that's exactly how you want your Mod Podge to go on to get a better result. Even though there may be some staining on the bristles and paint on the ferrules, these brushes have held up so well over the last couple of years. They are so good and I highly recommend them. Something you have probably seen if you have been around for a while because they are in almost every single video would be silicone pads because I love to use these, whether I am painting or using wood glue or hot glue, they are fantastic. These are silicone pads from Surebonder. Now, not all silicone pads are created equal, and let me show you why. The reason why I like these ones is because they are so nice and thick. As you can see, I really do use these. They are nasty and dirty, but that's not a big deal because all I do is wash them up and then they will look as good as new. But because they're nice and thick, they don't get all like wrinkled or stretched out or anything like that. These are fantastic to have. They really provide a nice area for you to work on top of, especially if you are painting or working with glue. I just love having these on hand. So a question I get asked about all the time is how I clean up my brushes. Now I use Dr. Bronner's soap to clean both my brushes and my mats. I love this. You can pick it up at like Walmart, Target, I think I got this one at Costco. You can get it on Amazon. It does such a great job cleaning your products. I actually even use this to clean my makeup brushes. I love using this soap. This is the peppermint scent, but it comes in other scents and even unscented. Sticking with cleaning products, I didn't even know this one existed until Courtney from Creative on the Cheap introduced it to me, and I will never go back, and that would be a menu vacuum. Hers actually looks like a ladybug, but I love this white one. It just is nice and sleek looking, and hear that does such a good job of picking up all those little messes we tend to create while we are crafting I purposely put the glitter down to show you how well it would vacuum it up and this is just some little wood bits right here and it sucks those right up apparently Courtney has given it to her kids when they were little and they used it to vacuum crumbs off of a table I cannot say enough good things about it you just plug it into a USB to charge it it holds a charge for a really long time and it's just cordless and you run it over your area for around $10, I just think every crafter should own one of these. This next item is one of those things that you have probably seen by now, but if you have not gotten, I'm gonna strongly encourage you to look into it, and that would be a USB lighter. The reason why I think this is so fantastic is if you're anything like me, anytime you had a regular lighter, it never works. Like the fluid is always like really low and you're trying to shake it, and you're trying to get it to work. This, you just plug it in and charge it with a USB. When I turn it on, it will show me the charge. Now it's showing me that I just have two little lights. It's not fully charged right now. And then you just push the button and then there's your little light. Light your candles. You can do the ends of your ribbon so they don't fray. I mean, so many different things that you would do with a regular lighter, you can do with this one, but no more having to buy other lighters. It's a one and done, love this. This next tool honestly deserves like a round of applause because that is how good it is and that is my Surebonder stapler. Now, let me explain to you why I think this is better than other staplers. So you have this little knob here. If you turn it to normal, it works just like any stapler. You push this lever down, voila, you staple things. You turn it to right here where it says trigger. 
You can then press this part down like that. Then you use the trigger and you can staple. So I can then use my right hand, my left hand, hand it to my nine-year-old. You can hand it to a three-year-old. They can use it. So you can do a project you know, with somebody if you want to that may not have as strong of hands. One of the best decisions I made was I used this when I redid my sister's classroom. And let me tell you, I have come to the conclusion that every teacher should have one of these to do their bulletin boards with. And so if you were trying to think of a great teacher gift, look no further. This is so much easier to do bulletin boards with than them taking their school issued stapler and banging it against the wall where 50% of those times those staples don't even want to work. This is all they need. I feel like this will not surprise a lot of you, but I do get asked the question, what glue gun do I recommend? And without a doubt, 100%, not even 99%. It is the Sure Bonder Mini Detail Tip Cordless Glue Gun. Now, these are actually the same gun. This is just a collab that Sure Bonder did with Lynn Lilly, so the color is different. And honestly, it is very appealing to me because I love the blue and pink of it. So right now, I tend to gravitate towards that. But then this is Sure Bonder's traditional colors. It doesn't matter which one you get, they work identically and if they disappeared, I would be out buying one in a heartbeat. Could not imagine. I would give up every other glue gun as long as I could have this. That is how much I love this. So the reason why I love this one so much, one, it's cordless and it comes with its own little stand, which this is the drip tray, but it doesn't really drip. So in itself, I love that. I also love that you can control the amount of glue that comes out of it with a little detail tip. I think that's super important. I can do just a teeny, teeny bit, or I can add more glue. I would tell you about 95% of the time, this is the glue gun I reach for over my drawer full of glue guns. It's just this one. You know the saying, don't put baby in the corner? Well, I took baby out of the corner this year. This is a Cricut mini heat press. I actually have a nine by nine one and I was always using that one, but this year I really leaned into using the mini and I used it on really small projects, really large projects. And not only did I use it when I was using like an iron on or an HTV vinyl, but I used it when I was like ironing fabrics. It just is such a little workhorse. I cannot tell you how much I love it. And not only do I think it's great when you're working within like a Cricut project, but if you're a sewer or someone like that, I think you could find a lot of use for it as well. It is just a great little iron and it, it is so good. I almost did not want to mention this one because I know it's an investment, but if I'm being honest with you and I'm sharing the best tools for 2022, then I have to share this. And that would be the Cricut Explore 3. Now, wait a second, up until recently, I would not have said that because I was still leaning towards the Explore Air 2 or even the Maker. But what sent me over the edge was I was creating some team shirts for my son and the rest of the team members, and I was doing several of them. And I really was excited that I could use the smart vinyl with those. And because of that, just the option of being able to use the smart vinyl really sealed the deal for me to just love my Explore 3 that much more. Now, I don't always have to use smart vinyl. I can still use my mat. Just the option that I can use the smart vinyl and wanting you that same option of using the smart vinyl when you want to tells me that my recommendation should be the Explore 3 if you are looking at investing in a Cricut. If you have seen any Cricut videos, you have definitely seen that people use different tools, but you only need a couple tools, some very basic ones. Honestly, I use a scraper and a pick. Those are my two most used tools. Beyond that, everything else is nice to have. I found this really basic set on Amazon. It's only $13 right now. I think it's a really great deal. It's actually a better deal than a lot of the generic ones and it would be worth investing in if you just recently got a Cricut or you're looking into getting a Cricut. So one of the tools I feel like has received a ton of hype probably from all of us crafter creators would be miter shears. But you guys, 
If you don't have some of these, there is a reason why they get all the hype. It's because they are such a great functioning tool, especially if you do not have any like power tools. I think they are great, but even if you do, they are so handy for like your smaller wood pieces. If you work with like dowels and popsicle sticks and things like that, because you can cut something that is a good inch in length. And not only can you cut it straight on, but you can turn this part and you can cut it on an angle. It's really nice that you can just put something in on that angle and just cut it through just like that. Look at that nice little angle. So just by turning this dial, you can cut things on an angle and it's so simple and easy to use these. They're just great to have on hand. So something that I have had for years that I feel like is kind of having its comeback, but I think it's worth mentioning still if you don't have something like this, would be like a really solid hole punch. But this is not your general hole punch. This is a We Are Memories Keeper Cropodile. Now, this is the one that also has like a grommet thing, which I don't use this part of it, but actually has two different sizes of hole punch. This is a smaller one that is, I believe it's, a, it tells me the size, it's an eighth. And then this is a three eighths hole punch, but it can cut through like wood, and leather and thicker fabrics and things like that. So good, absolutely love this. But because I really only use it for the hole punch itself, I picked up this crocodile. Yep, I own two, but it has a larger hole punch on it. It has a fourth of a whole hole punch on it. And you can go in slightly further than you can on the other one, but it is so good. So depending on what you actually think you would use, I'm telling you, you do not need both of these. That would be ridiculous. But to have something that can punch through thicker things like veneer and thicker fabrics so easily would just be so handy to have. You just have to decide, do you want something that can go through with smaller holes? Do you need something with a bigger hole? Do you need it to have more depth that it can go through? These are all questions you have to ask yourself, but I wish I could tell you I had a favorite I use a small hole on this one. It's really still this one. If I had to choose one, it's this one, but I don't use this part and I don't want you to think I do because I don't use it at all, but I love the hole punches on this 100%. It just doesn't get its full use. It's this one. I'm sorry I chose between you. This next one is something you won't even think about until the moment you need it and that is like a large needle. Now this is a darning needle. I use it when I'm like creating like garlands, trying to go through like beads or pom poms, things like that. You want a sharp end and a large eye so you can get like twine through it. You can pick up needles like this at like Walmart, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Joann's, anywhere. They're super easy. But if you're anything like me, it is so easy to lose a needle. So what I loved was finding this wooden case I actually got this on Amazon. It has a lid that screws on that I can put my needles in and it closes. And the best thing is it comes with two and it comes with all of the needles. So you get the needles and the two wooden cases all together for about the same price you would get for just buying like a pack of the needles. So in my book, that is like a win-win. I absolutely love these. Now you can keep both of these and divide up your needles yourself. Maybe bigger needles, little needles, little needles, big needles, little needles, or keep one for yourself and give one to a friend. You have whatever option you want because you would get two of them. Maracas. If you are anything like me, you have so much in your craft area that the idea of having a full toolbox just is not plausible. So having something really simple like a tool like this, like a screwdriver that is like an all-in-one is just great. I need these all the time to remove like the backings off of picture frames, to add them on there. This is my favorite style of screwdriver where it's like the two-in-one. So this one side, you have your small, smaller Phillips and flathead. And then when you pull out and flip it around, you have your larger flathead and Phillips. I love that it's just one handle with four different options for you. And for the most part, this is all you need. If you need anything fancier, 
I have those tools. We keep those in their garage, but this is what I like to keep with my craft stuff, just right at arm's reach. Another tool that I feel like everyone should have is a palm sander. It took me a while to find the one that I really wanted because the one I had before actually broke. And let me tell you why I picked this one and why I love it. To start off with, my old sander only had these little side parts to put the sandpaper in and it was really thin metal and that's actually what broke on it. So I love that this was a thicker metal and it was so easy. I'm not concerned that that is gonna break when I pinch it and I open it up. It opens up so easily and it's so much easier to use. Then the front has this little claw where you hold your sandpaper. So to get the sandpaper on, you first place your paper inside that claw, then you take it over and you stick it in the back underneath that little part that opens. Then you take those little side metal parts and you push them and lift them up over the side and lock them into place and it's just that easy. I also love having a palm sander that just uses regular sandpaper. It just takes a fourth of a sheet of regular sandpaper. It is fantastic and a great tool to have on hand. I think everyone should have one. This tool definitely deserves a whole lot more love than I've been giving it and that is my heat gun. Let me share with you why I think this is the best heat gun and why I think everyone should own it. Starting first with the temperature control, you have this complete dial that you can control your temperature and it goes all the way around. So you have several different settings from almost a cool to a very hot and I love that. So you can think of it like a hair dryer where you have all those different settings. So great where a lot of your heat guns only have like two different settings on it. I also love this base because then it can just lay flat and set straight up if you need it to work like that when you're waiting for it. It also has two different speeds so you can do a low speed or a high speed. It is such a great heat gun. I absolutely love using it and I know it's gonna last me a really long time. I wanna know what is your favorite tool that you've been using. Tell me that in the description box. In last year's video, I share some of my favorite tools. Some repeat, some don't. So you wanna make sure you check that one out. Thank you so much for spending your time with me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.